grateful to God to know that factor because so many people are looking for help and looking for tranquility and looking for peace in all different places. But I just want to encourage somebody today to tell you can't nobody, can't nobody do you like Jesus can. For those on social media, thank you for joining us this morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know the routine. Go ahead and call in your family, your friends, text them, message them, share the, the, the post. Let them know it is time for the word of the Lord with the Wells Ministry of Dallas. Let us go ahead and pray. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. God, we thank you for covering us. We thank you for protecting us, for keeping us. Oh, God, we ask you to be in our midst today. Take full control, Lord God, of your word today. Anoint every word that exit our lips. Give us clarity of speech and clarity of thought. Open up hearts, minds, and spirit everywhere, Lord God, that they may receive your word today. Open up ears that they may hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Have your way, Lord God, in this service, wherever they may be hearing it, whenever they may hear it, Lord God, have your way in their lives and in this service. We give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead one more time and give God some praise. Come on. He's been mighty good to us. Is there any witness in the house that can say, he's been better to me than I've been to myself? He keeps right on doing great things for me. I wouldn't do for me to be a singer in y'all's eyes today because then I would sing. The issue is the criticism. But can't no to do me like Jesus and he's been better to me than I've been to myself and look at here and he keeps right on doing great things for me I don't know about you but he keeps doing great things for me and you know what you know why because I keep putting it in his hands I put this in that I put it all in his hands it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter how big it is. I put it all in his hands. All in his hands. This and that. This, 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 and. I put it all in his hands. He can handle it. That's a fact. That's why I put it all in his hands. Ain't no sense of worrying about it, crying about it. Just go ahead and put it in his hands. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard. Just put it in his hand. Just put it in his hand. And let God work it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And a songwriter said, Jesus will work it out. He will work it out. Got a light bill do? Telephone disconnect, waiting on your next paycheck, Jesus will work it out. Baby need a pair of shoes, need a bag of food, whatever it is, he will work it out. Anybody know he'll work it out? Yes, he'll work it out. Why don't you witness to your neighbor? Tell your neighbor real quickly, Jesus will work it out. Oh, y'all don't believe it? Yeah, that may be the wrong neighbor. Turn and tell another neighbor, Jesus will work it out. While you trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. While you trying to handle it, he's already worked it out. There's a song that says, we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of 
of the Lord. We bring sacrifice of praise. And sometimes I don't know if we understand that, but can I, can I be a little transparent as I explain this particular portion when we say we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord? You may have walked in like me, not feeling it at all, not feeling it at all. But because I've made it this far, because God's been good to me, I refuse to step in his house and I give him praise. My flesh don't feel it, but something inside of me keeps telling me to go ahead. That's a sacrifice of praise. Praising him when you don't feel like it. Praising him when you're down. Now, praising him when the body seems to be weak. Praise him. And somebody says, I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. All right. Another song says, I guess that's why I don't sing. Another song says, I don't know what you come to do, but I come to lift him up. My hands, I come to give praise. I come to do my dance. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to magnify him. I came to get a praise on. All right. Yeah. Woo! Sometimes the reality is life overwhelms us and situations overwhelms us and Satan attacks our minds and our bodies and our spirit to weigh down heaviness upon us. But I believe someone said it like this. When I think of the goodness of Jesus... When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, I praise him for saving me. Woo. Sometimes you got to work your mind in order to work through the situation. And you got to remind yourself of how good God is. He says, I praise God for saving me. I praise God for saving me. If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I praise God for saving me. For saving me, I praise God for saving me. Do we have any witness? If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I praise God for saving me. I praise God for saving me. I praise God for saving me. If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I praise God for saving me. I praise God for loving me. I praise God for loving me. If it had not been for Jesus, 
where would I be? I praise God for loving me. I praise God for loving me. If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I praise God for loving me. All right, I praise him. I praise him. I praise him. I praise him. brought me and to this marvelous light. He brought me out. He brought me out. I'm so glad he brought me out. Mm. You know what? I just think that just about right now, a few of you could probably get a little breakthrough. Just, if you just stand on your feet just for a little bit and just take a couple of steps. You may not have to run, but sometimes just... Look at it. He's allowed you to see another birthday. He's allowed you to see another day. He protected you. Healed you. Keeping you. He deserves a praise. Because he first loved me and he purchased my salvation way back on Calvary. I love him.
just because. Lord, I must say I, I am grateful for all God is doing. I don't know about you, but I know that the Lord is blessing me right now. Now, you know, I can't deal with that much because I can't handle it. I'll admit to that factor, but he's blessing me. He's blessing me right now. Mm-hmm. Can anybody have that testimony? If it had not been for him, I don't know where any of us would be. He's a helper. He's a keeper. He's a provider. He's a healer. He's a protector. He's everything I need and then some. That's the thing. We have to identify that. We have to acknowledge that factor. He away. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. And then he rocked me in the cradle of his arms. And he knew he kept me. And I did. Anybody been battered by the storm? Yeah. If it had not been the Lord on my side. Tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Oh, Lord, we love you. And we appreciate you. My Lord. Our topic today, and we're going to move on. I, I, Thank you. this place. 
Luis. I am surrounded, but this is how I fight my battles. Let's go into the word of the Lord. I, I'm full at this present moment with the anointing and presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, his arms of protection and his love and his compassion. Oh, great is thy faithfulness. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you. I don't know what your week looked like or your weekend looked like. But I've been through the storm and rain. But so far, I've made it. Heartaches and pain. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I've made it. Why? Because I'm surrounded. <laughs> let's, let's go into the word of the Lord. I, I feel his presence. I feel his love. I'm surrounded. We're going to start in 2 Kings chapter 6, and we only have a few little verses to read uh, today. And we're going to say what the Lord says and move on out of your way. In the midst of, of an event going on here, we extract a few scriptures, a few verses from it, using the New Living Translation. Verse number 13 says, go and find out where he is, the king commanded. So I can send troops to seize him. Now understand this factor that there are some who are trying to seize your joy. They're trying to seize your blessing. They're trying to seize your deliverance. They're trying to seize you. They don't want to see you prosper. They don't is above where you are. And so they fought against that to, to see what's wrong, to see if they can take you in. Now, if you read prior to this, the issue was that this, this nation was, was attacking. And it seemed like everywhere that he tells them to go, you go such and such, and you go, we're going to go over here. And wherever the plan was, somehow or the other, the other side got the information. And the king thought that there was a spy in the midst of the camp. And, and him said, listen, it's not here. It's a, he's the, the prophet Elijah is the one. He can tell what you're saying even in your bedroom. Why? You have to know because God is feeding him. And so here the king then begins to plot against and say, I need to know where he is, find out where he is so that we can seize him. And the report came back, Elijah is at Dotham. So one night the king of Aram sent a great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city. Now understand here, listen, listen, I want you to understand this factor. Let's, can I break this up into little pieces here? Verse 14 said, so one night the king of Abram sent, look at this word, a great, great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city. Now, if I'm not mistaken, they were out to seize one person. One person, 
But the enemy sent out a great army with many chariots and horses to surround them. Listen here. The devil doesn't fight fair. The enemy doesn't fight fair. There's a crowd that will come against you. Will come against you like a flood. But you got to trust God. You got to believe God got you. You got to know without a shadow of a doubt that as long as you're in God's perfect plan, he got you. But the enemy is not going to come one-on-one. -on -one. The enemy is going to try to surround you. So they one night, look at here, and this is at night. So we're going to go through the night so we're not easily seen. We're going to go through the night and sneak up on them. We're not going to the daylight where we can be seen. Our deeds are evil. So we're going to go in the nighttime. We're going to surround the city. Look at this. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Everywhere. He's surrounded with enemies. Anybody else seem to feel like every time you turn around, there's another problem? Somebody else is against you. Somebody lying on you. Somebody talking against you. Something else going wrong. Surrounded by stuff. Even if you seem like you're sleeping and you wake up the next morning. If it ain't one thing, it's another thing. Something else done went wrong at home. Something else done went wrong on the job. Something else done went wrong in your body. Something else going on. There's always seem to be something surrounding you. Something you didn't ask for. Something you ain't done nothing to do. You just wake up. And there's issues. Anybody ever, you went to bed and you thought, did you wake up and there's some new issues? You wake up and there's something else to face. You wake up and look out the window and you came to hardly uh, 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 enjoy the sunshine for seeing the troops, and the horses, and the chariots everywhere. You can't grab your phone and just, let me just scroll on Facebook without running into something. Let me turn on the news and somebody else got killed. Somebody else is dead. Something else is happening. They're doing something else stupid. There's a war over here. There's something rockets going here. There are bombs going on. Lord have mercy. Early in the morning, you get your phone because you get a notification. Somebody done text you. Mess. Somebody done text you. Issues. Somebody done text you, something else going on. You got to try to solve your problem, somebody else's problem, help somebody else through. You ain't even put your shoes on yet. And already you got stuff you got to deal with. You hadn't been able to get out of the bed, brush your teeth, get your cup of coffee, your cup of hot chocolate, your orange juice, before your toast can brown. There's something else you got to deal with. You went to bed thinking, my tomorrow is going to be better than today. My tomorrow, it looked like I'm going to check my agenda. Uh, check my, oh yeah, look like I got an easy day tomorrow. I know y'all may not, I, I may be speaking French to some of you. I got an easy day tomorrow. I ain't got nothing, ain't got nothing going on tomorrow. It's, it's kind of light. The enemy must have heard that. Because before you can open the blinds, you're surrounded. You step out of your room, still got a little morning in your eye. There's a leak here. There's something going on over there. Can you fix this? Can you handle that? Email from the job. Text message from the family. I ain't got up good. 
Now, we know the scripture said weeping may endure for a night, but joy come in the morning. And then we question, where is my joy? I, I was looking for joy this morning. First of all, I didn't sleep well last night. I know the scripture said the sleep of a, of a working man, did I put it, is sweet. You done work all day. Half the night, and you still. Lord, is the scripture correct? Yeah, it is. It's already settled in heaven. But why? Why then am I waking up and I can't get joy? I, I, I get up out of it and I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded by stuff. Look at the next part of this verse. Now the servant of God went out and he saw everything. And then here he says, oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elijah. Here goes somebody asking you, what are we going to do? Now, I know some of you may have put yourself in God's seat. You can handle everything. You got the answer to everything. But for the rest of us, sometimes we're asking, why are you asking me? I don't know what we're going to do. I'm going to figure it out too. Well, I will. well how, what are we going to do about, what are we going to do about this? I don't know. I just, I just opened the mail and it's a cut off. Notice. What, what are we going to do? Didn't you just open the mail? You you saw it when I saw it. Ain't nobody, nobody, now maybe some of you. Ain't nobody put no extra money in my account overnight. Now they draft it out overnight. They like the enemy. They come at night. The job sticks it in. And before you can wake up the next morning, you're the bill collectors. And you wake up and sometimes it's lower than when you went to sleep. What, what, what are we going to do? I don't know. So here's the young servant says to Eli, what are we going to do? We are surrounded. Verse number 15 says, 16 says, don't be afraid, Elijah told him, for there are more on our side than on theirs. Now, you know, we keep running into these verses, so I'm trying to, I guess God is really trying to tell us as the people here a message that somebody really needs to hear because it keeps popping up in scripture. I don't specifically pick those scriptures, it just seemed to be happening in the events. But look at this first part. Don't be afraid. Now, some of you are facing some stuff. Some of you are going through some things and you're shaky. You're nervous about it. And God keeps sending this phrase to us. Don't be afraid. But you, you, you don't know. It's, it could be my job. It could be my livelihood. It could be my health. It could be my house. It could be my child. Don't be afraid. I don't know who this is for, but can you help me out this morning? Turn and tell a neighbor in, in a sweet voice, don't be afraid. Now, don't go asking them what, 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 what you're going through. I didn't tell you to do that. I just told you to encourage them, don't be afraid afraid you don't need to know what they're going through just tell them don't be afraid though don't be afraid why not because there are more on our side than on theirs now somebody gonna say you're crazy because I can see the enemy all right I can see bill number one bill number two Bill number three. I ain't crazy. Now, I can, I, I mean, I can read French and Greek and Hebrew, but I can read 
past due, cut off, due immediately, over. I can read those few little words. Lawsuit, I can read those words. I wish I had somebody to go with me. I can read that. I can, I can figure out when I go to the, to the water and do this, ain't nothing coming out. I, I, I can figure that out. You ain't got to be no genius. So I can see the enemy. I can see stuff trying to seize my joy. I can see stuff trying to seize my peace. I can see stuff trying to seize my life. I can see that. And you tell me don't be afraid because there's more on our side than on theirs. All I see is trouble. Everywhere you go, there's trouble. <laughs> Everywhere you go, there's strife. Everywhere you go, there's something that weary you. But remember, my God. Oh, y'all know that? See, some of y'all are awfully quiet. You ain't going to get deliverance if you can't keep your, you can, you're going to keep shutting your mouth. Sometimes you got to speak that thing into existence. See, the power of death and life is in the power of the tongue. Sometimes you got to speak it out and say, there's more on my side than on there. Victory is mine. I see the trouble. I see the situation. I see I'm surrounded with stuff. But I don't have to backslide. I don't have to convert back, revert back to, to my lifestyle and sin to fix this. I don't have to go back and try to, you know, give up stuff so he can help me out. I ain't got to slide up to somebody for them to help me out. I ain't got to go crawling to somebody to get some help because there's more on our side than they're on their side. So then Elijah prayed. Look here. This is what he, he prayed. When you're surrounded by stuff, here's the thing you need to do. Pray. Then Elijah prayed, O oh Lord, Open his eyes and let him see. Now look at here, look at here, look at here. The prayer was not God send help. The prayer was open his eyes so that he can see. Lord, you don't have to move my mountain. Just give me strength to climb. Lord, I may not have a whole bunch of faith, but I got a little faith. And I can speak to the mountain. It wasn't, Lord, bring in some help. It's, Lord, open his eyes and let him see. Let him see what? He already see the trouble. He already see the army. He already see the chariots and the horses. No, there's something beyond that that we have not been looking at. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, wait a minute, when he looked where? I looked to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. You stop looking down. When he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elijah was filled with horses and chariots of fire. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, I wish I had some time to deal with this. What he saw in the natural was just the army of troops and horses and chariots, just regular horses and chariots. But what God said was horses and chariots of fire. Don't tell me that God won't do abundantly above what you're able to ask or think. So when his eyes opened, he didn't just see other horses and chariots. He saw horses and chariots of fire all around the hillside. Now, for those who may not know, 
let me just go ahead and kind of put it this way. See, if you're down here, you're only going to be able to see here and, and, and whatever below you. When you're above them, you can see all of them. So the Lord did not put them on their same level. He put them on the hillside, which means they have an advantage over them because he can, they can see them, who's behind them, who's in front of them. So he, he opens the young man's eyes to see everything that was there. And as the Armenian army advanced towards him, Elijah prayed. Now look at here. What are we doing again? Praying. Saints, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Says Elijah prayed, Oh Lord, please make them blind. So the Lord struck them with blindness as Elijah had asked. What? You open one eye and you close another one. <laughs> he opens one door and he can close another. See, somebody is missing your, 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 your word. He's opening up your eyes to see he's still with you. He is opening up your eyes to let you know he has not left you. He's opening up your eyes to let you know he's still God. He's opening up your eyes and says, nothing is too hard for me. He's opening up your eyes to see, listen here, I got you. I know what the enemy is doing. I still have you. And why the enemy think they got the upper hand, first and foremost, you have to understand this. The enemy did not see the troops in the hillside. See, sometimes God will keep some things hidden from your enemies. Sometimes the only way they know your next move is that you talk too much. You feed them with what you're doing. You feed them with your plans. That's why they can kind of manipulate the situation because you done talked too much. You done told them what you're getting ready to do. Well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Shut your mouth. The enemy has already showed you, I'm here to seize you. I'm here to destroy you. I don't care how much I said I love you. I don't care how much I said I'm with you. I am here to destroy you. And you keep feeding them information. The Lord is opening up your eyes to let you see people as they are. You keep putting on shades on a cloudy day. You better take the shades off and look and see. He said, open up their eyes so they can see. Open, listen, open it up. Some of y'all are so vain, you won't wear your glasses. Blind is a bat almost. You don't want to wear your glasses because vanity. Can't read half the time. Where are my glasses? Why don't you have them on? Well, I don't need them to drive. If you can't read here, how you know you're reading the stop sign and the yield sign and reading really how close you are to the car in front of you? Something's wrong with your eyes, baby. That's why the doctor told you to get glasses. I don't look right in them. Now, they, they got all kinds of frames. You mean you didn't take enough time to pick the right one? I prefer a contact. But you can't put eye drops in your eyes. How are you going to do eye uh, contacts? Get them glasses and put them on so you can see. And sometimes God is opening your eyes so you can see people. Oh, they're brown. They told me they were blue. They told me they loved me. Love doesn't do this. Love don't. And listen here. There's some song. I don't know all the words to it. You know, I don't keep up with all the songs like that. But there's a portion of some song that said, love don't live here anymore. Is that that's part of the song? I mean, we don't have to listen to all that, but we remember it in our remembrances. <laughs> love don't live here anymore. Right, right. That's what somebody said. Yeah, somebody said it somewhere. 
Love don't live. Do you not understand that sometimes love leaves people? When you first met them, they may have loved you. During the early part, they may have loved you. But somewhere, somehow, love packed their bags and, and you thought because you still had love, they still had love. And the Lord said, let me open up your eyes and say that you know love don't live there anymore. And you trying to hold on to what they said let go of. But I love them, okay? For God so loved the world too that he gave his only begotten son. But there's still, the Bible said, hell is enlarging itself. Why? Because everybody ain't loving him. So here he says, let's wait a minute. He says, let's not. here they are. He prayed again. He said, blind them. So the Lord struck them with blindness as Elijah had asked. See, what happens is when you do what the Lord tells you to do, how the Lord tells you to do, you can ask whatsoever you will. And it shall be done according to his perfect will. Because the thing about it, when you live in his perfect will, you'll ask in his perfect will. I don't want nothing that is not in God's perfect will. I may want it, but if it's not in his perfect will, Lord, don't give it to me. I don't want his permissive will, because in his permissive will, I'll end up going to hell. And a lot of people end up with stuff out of God's permissive will that trips you up, that drags you out, that you get you out of the will of God because your flesh got what it wanted. But your spirit is dying. Lord, let me have what's in your perfect will. And if I get what's in your perfect will, I'll be all right. I'm surrounded by stuff. All the people I'm surrounded by is doing what they want to do. They're doing them. Lord, why can't I do me? Because it's not in his perfect will to do you. Somebody said you got to deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow him. Now, I can't do me if I'm going to steal, if I'm going to deny myself. So I got to deny myself. That means I can't always do me. And just, listen here, Can I put it, let me put it this way. Just because I go to the store and they have it in my size, don't mean I ought to buy and wear it. It may not be for me. It might look, it may not look all right on me. Let me just give you an example. I'll use me. I don't want to indict nobody because I don't want to fight nobody today. I went to the store shopping and I saw this jacket this sports coat this suit just looked good on the rack too I put it on it fit button it up yeah I didn't even have to suck in just it wasn't the button wasn't pulling or nothing it fit then I went over to the mirror and looked at myself and I swear I saw the little yellow bus. Because that's what I look like. Yellow and black. I just knew pretty soon them little kids going to come jump on my back. Because that's what I look like. Little yellow school bus. I said, oh, no, this, this yellow don't work for me. Now, I can wear some colors, but this yellow don't work for me. So I went over and I pulled out another one. And put it on. It fit. I went back to the mirror. I said, oh, no, Lord, have mercy. This doesn't work either. I look like a Sprite bottle. And, hey, listen, if I can tell myself that at the store, I'd, I'm going to use this word. I know some may not like it, but I'm using, I'd be stupid to go ahead and buy it, put it on, and come out among y'all. And don't think y'all ain't going to say something. I put that jacket right back on the rack, hung it right back up. It was in my price range. It fit, but it did not work for me. See, everything that fits your flesh don't, is not good for your flesh. I then put on a third one. 
you know, you have to be persistent sometimes. I put on a third one. I put on that third one. I went over to the mirror. I had to take it off. Because there, there was a spirit that came with the third one. It was pink. That baby looked sweet on me. I said, Lord, as dark as I am, and this pink is accessorizing me, I could walk up in here because I think I'd be floating. I said, no, this is the wrong spirit. Let me take this off and put this back on the rack, too. I said, I'm going to have to save that until I can get the right spirit. Now, I, yellow one wasn't going to work. The green, lime green wasn't going to work. But that pink, I felt some puffing up. Just. I said, this Negro look good in this pink. I said, let me take it off. You wasn't going to be able to tell me nothing. I said, put it back on the rack. What am I saying? Because sometimes what works for our flesh or what we think is okay, because somebody else got it on and somebody else, does not mean it's what you need. And you got to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him and leave some stuff. Lay aside every weight in the sin. It wasn't a sin for me to wear either one of those colors. But uh, the first two was going to be a weight because my feelings might have gotten hurt. I don't know. You know, it's, I already knew what I looked like. I, and I knew people were going to laugh and say something. And I wasn't going to be able to deal with that at the wrong time. And that pink, well, I, I didn't have the right spirit. It wasn't, wasn't the right spirit. I couldn't couldn't shake off that spirit, and so I knew that wasn't right. So why are you dipping and dabbing in stuff that something in you already telling you it does not work for you? To let it go. So Lord, I don't want anything in your permissive will that may take me out of your will. Lord, let me have what's in your perfect will. And Lord, open up my eyes that I may see and blind the eyes of my enemy so that I can lead them away from where it is. That's what Elijah did. He led them away, took them to Samaria, and then said, oh, okay, now God, give them their sight back. And when they, their sight came back, they were in the middle of Samaria, surrounded. See, sometimes you ain't got to always fight. Sometimes you just got to pray, let the Lord handle it. I want to get him. Sometimes you just got to pray and let the Lord handle it. Because that's how you fight your battles. Let the Lord surround them and let the Lord handle them. Our last verse, book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. It shows the reality. I see my help. Although I see my trouble, I see my help. I hope somebody can see that. I see my trouble. My trouble is here, but my help is here. I need to look up because my trouble is here, but my help is here. The Bible says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you always, even until the end of the earth. I see my trouble, but I'm looking up because I see my help. And how many people know your help is already there? Now, somebody said help is on the way. <laughs> but I, can I tell you, help is already there. Before you call, didn't my Bible say he answered? Oh, somebody won't go with it. Before you cried out, he's already came with the answer. Before you even knew you needed it, he's already made a way. So sometimes it's just, Lord, open up my eyes so I can see my help. Because I know you making a way out of no way. I know you're getting all of this working together for the good of them that love the Lord and are those that are calling according to his purpose. Lord, you're working it out because you're going to get the glory out of this. I'm going to come out of this as pure gold. And before I even come out, I'm going to shout before the battle is over. I'm going to trust them before I even see it. Oh, somebody don't really understand that. Before it's manifested, I'm going to go ahead and get my praise on. 
I see trouble everywhere. But you know what? The more I see trouble, the bigger the victory has to become. The more the enemy is surrounding me, the more God has to come out, come through this. And the greater the victory. Well, if I already know I got victory, why I got to wait until the battle is over? See, some of y'all are so, you, 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 you got, you're so caught up and I got to see it. You can't give God praise until you see it. So then you know what? You wait, you're still behind the curve. See, if you know God, then if you know God, then if you know God, then you know God never lost a battle. If you know God, you know God always gets the victory. If you know God and you know God is working, you already know you're coming out. Oh, you may be hit. You may be knocked down, but you already know I got the victory. So the enemy has hidden me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. The enemy started looking at you crazy. Why are you praising him and I'm attacking you? Because victory is on the way. What? Victory is on. You know, can you stop hitting me just for a moment? What? Just for a moment. Just give me one moment. Stop hitting me for just one moment. What are you getting ready to do? I'm getting ready to praise him. Wait a minute, what are you? What are you? Because I'm, I'm, I'm calling him to come on through. When praises go up. Oh, y'all don't. So why, why are you trying to figure it out? He done already worked it out. Why are you trying to analyze it? He's already said, don't worry, I got this. I set you up to get victory. I set you up to get the glory out of this. I set you up for a breakthrough. I set you up for a blessing. Everybody who pointed their finger saying, you gone, you out, you out, you out. I want to listen here. I prepared a table before you. I had to get your enemies to surround you because I had to prepare a table before you in the presence of and then anointed my head with oil. See, this is what we think of. That's why we sometimes live beneath our privileges. No, he said, he anointed my head with oil. My cup ran its over. This ain't going to run over. You lift your little head up. That ain't going to run. That ain't running over. He anointed my head with oil. He is pouring it out on me. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy are following me all the days of my life. Listen here, brothers and sisters. Don't you know God is trying to... Uh, and it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that destroys every chain and every yoke. God is trying to anoint you. He surrounded you to anoint you. He surrounded you to bring you out victoriously. God is working it out. Uh, just, just. And some of you, before you can get back to your seat, you don't want that a little anointing off. Do you really want victory? Or are you just saying something? The late Elder Long used to use a phrase, said, that's just your mouth talking. Anoint me, Jesus. That's just your mouth talking. Because when he anoints you, he anoints you for purpose. He anoints you for battle. He'll anoint you for greater. So when you ask God, Lord, anoint me, then be prepared to be surrounded. Anoint me. Prepare for somebody to act a fool in your house. Anoint me. Prepare for somebody on your job to act crazy. Anoint me. And pro act, look for something to go wrong. Anoint me. Because what he's going to do is surround you. And when God surrounds you, there's more on our side than on theirs. 
And somebody said, one can chase a thousand, two can put 10,000 to flight. Listen here, with Jesus on my side, he's more than the whole world against me. But I need faith to be able to see what's in the hillside. Not just what's here, what's in the hillside. You snapping at your family members, you snapping at your co-workers, you snapping and getting mad because things are going awry. It ain't time to snap, it's time to praise him. See, that's what holds up your blessing because you keep snapping. And God is trying to get your spirit right. Stop snapping and start praising him. Just so much to do. Just got so much. You want victory or you want to stay in it longer? Stop all that snapping. You don't know what all I got to go through. You don't know what all I got to do. You don't, listen, I'm not God. I don't need to know. But if you want to come out of this thing victoriously, start praising him for it. You said, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Well, then if he got to prepare you, he got to clean you up. Then you said, Lord, use me in thy service. Well, if he's going to use you, he got to pump you up. Because God can't use no coward soldier. So you got to figure out, no cross, no crown. I'm surrounded. I am surrounded because God has made a way for me. I'm surrounded because I know God is getting ready to do even greater things in my life. I'm surrounded. You're surrounded. You just got to believe it. You just got to believe it. Now, we've been talking to our neighbor this morning, talking to our neighbor this morning. This last time, will you do me this favor? Talk to yourself and tell yourself, I'm surrounded. Mm -hmm. I'm surrounded. Uh huh. Yeah, you've been telling your neighbor, don't be afraid. You know, Jesus is going to work it out. Now you got to tell yourself, I'm surrounded. Not by the problems, but I'm surrounded by God. I'm surrounded by him. There's more on my side than there is in the world against me. I'm surrounded. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Your goodness, your mercy, your loving kindness and grace. God, we could not make it without you. God, we are nothing without you. And Lord, we would have lost our minds. We're right there on the verge right now. Some of us, we're on the verge of depression. We're on the verge of giving up. We're on the verge of wondering why. Lord God, some of us are wondering if you even love us anymore, if you even care anymore. But God, thank you for your word to know that when we can't see it, we just need to pray and say, open up our eyes. Because we believe, God, that you're surrounding us. Continue to surround us. Continue to protect and guide us throughout this week. Oh, God, save, deliver, heal. Lord God, encourage hearts. Oh, comfort those who lost loved ones. Save those who are lost, Lord God. And help us to remember throughout this week, we are surrounded. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Go ahead and give God a praise. I'm surrounded. If you are not a member of the Wells Ministry of Dallas, we invite you to become a member. We're open to everyone um, to come and be a part. You can go to our website, thewellsdallas.com. Click on the button that says become a member <clears throat> and learn, love, and serve with us. Fill out that little information sheet and and come and, and be a part. We would love to have you regardless of where you are in the world. Uh, you can become an e-member. If you're in the DFW area, you can meet us here at uh, 1827 East Ledbetter Drive every Sunday morning. Come on in and be a part. We have an open door for you to come and be a part. Every person, every person, everywhere needs Jesus. Everybody needs him. And we're here to help you walk this journey uh, to heaven. Amen? And so come and be a part of us. Uh, you can also call us at 469-552-8300. Talk with someone. We'll talk with you, pray with you, and try to answer questions for you. But everybody needs a church home, and everybody needs to become active. Don't just have a church home to where you, you claim it. Be active. Be active in the kingdom of God. Be active 
in church. Don't just be a spectator. Don't just be someone who claim a building, claim a church name, but be an active part in the kingdom of God. Amen? Uh, we are also asking you, if you'd be so kind, to partner with us uh, in this ministry. We're having some charge problems. I guess I need to charge it. There's four ways to give, four ways to give to help this ministry out. Uh, through our website at thewellsdallas.com, uh, click on the Give button. Give through PayPal, or you can zell in your contribution at thewells1827 at gmail.com. And you can do that any time during the week, not just on Sunday. You can call any day of the week at 469-552-8300. Give by credit card. If you don't get an answer, please leave your name and your phone number. Someone will get back with you uh, shortly after to make sure that you can give. Uh, also, you can mail in your check or money order, make it payable to the Wells Ministry of Dallas. Send it to P.O. Box 1033, DeSoto, Texas, 75123. Or you can bring it by on Sundays uh, at 1827 East Let Better Drive, Dallas, Texas, uh, and uh, give your contribution to this ministry. Uh, you know, it is uh, a principle of the Lord's word uh, to give tithing and offering, free will offering. So we ask you to, you know, be able to uh, consider uh, supporting this, this ministry. And we definitely thank you uh, in advance for your generosity. Lady E, will you come on up for our announcements at this time? We are appreciative for her and all she does. Uh, we appreciate all of you that work so diligently that supports so diligently this ministry. Uh, we could not do it without you. And so we definitely thank God for you. We thank God for you. Okay. hands doing many things but we praise God anyway because our few hands move quickly thank you uh, praise the Lord everyone we are definitely grateful to be here with you all today it's always a privilege uh, to stand before you we want to remember that every single Wednesday night we have Bible study do not do not miss Bible study catch us on zoom or catch us on Facebook but please catch us every Wednesday night 7 o'clock p.m. Do not miss Bible study. Uh, unfortunately, I've been missing Bible study being live, but I'm able to catch it later on. So even if you can't catch us on time, you can always catch us online on Facebook to rewatch Bible study. Also, every single Sunday morning, like Bishop says, come in 1030, doors open at 10 o'clock. Come in for our 1030 morning worship. We want you to be here with us live and in person to enjoy the fellowship and the spirit of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Also, we have a thank you card this morning. Uh, it says, thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you so, so much for either the food, cards, flowers, or more importantly, your time during Mom's Home Going Celebration. We are forever grateful. Signed, First Lady Johnson, Sister Linnell, and Brother Landon. Oh, what a man would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful work to the children of men. Psalm 107 and 8. Amen. So we, we definitely will keep and we continue to keep Sister Lynn and her family as well as all who have uh, lost loved ones, whether it's recently or whether it has been a while. Because while you learn to live without, you still have the grief and the sorrow and the moments of remembrance. So we always will continue to pray for those who are in bereavement. Amen. And for those who may not know, and we're so happy to see uh, Sister Maxine Williams. Yes. Lost her younger brother yes. uh, just here recently. So we're continuing to lift them up in prayer. And also, as we stated uh, 
remember her sister-in-law, that the Lord will continue to touch her body and work out situations there. Sister Hale's family who've lost a loved one to continue to keep them in prayer and others. We Listen, as Lady E said, um, we, we, you, 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 you try to figure out how to move on, and you got to move on. But it doesn't remain, it doesn't take away from the grief. Uh, it doesn't take away from the hurt. And we, we want to continue to pray for Elder, uh, his uncle as well. Uh, and his, you know, pray for his mother and their family, uh, loss of uh, his uncle. Listen, we need each other. We need each other, and we need to continue to pray one for another. We appreciate all that you do, uh, all your prayers, your, connecti your connectivity with us throughout the week and on Sundays. Thank you so very much uh, for what you do. Uh, I'd be at, uh, amiss if I didn't just say uh, uh, even an extra thank you uh, for uh, what, who we call, a.k.a. Deuce, Brother Deuce, and abundantly above all that he, he does, uh, and filling in so many different areas, so many different areas. Uh, sometimes, you know, we, 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 we pick out uh, shortcomings, uh, we pick out what we don't like, but we forget to appreciate people for what they're doing. And we, I just want to openly thank him uh, because he, he wears a whole lot of different hats. Uh, he's opening up church doors, he's working at the door with temperatures, he's doing this, that, and the other all in the background, all surrounding. Uh, so we want to keep, listen, we don't have a whole bunch of uh, people yet. We're waiting on the rest of y'all to come on in. But we definitely want to keep in, in, encouraging uh, each and every one of you, and especially our young people, our young people. Remember, they do have hearts and feelings. We do have hearts and feelings. And sometimes, you know, we say some things that we so, and we, we hurt them, and we don't even don't even recognize it. So we don't want to hurt anybody, uh, anybody's feelings, anybody, whatever. But we want to lift up everybody. And then, of course, last week, uh, Sister Nitrion and her presentation, uh, her documentary, uh, including the church, getting the church out there and all that she does in our media, uh, social media portion, our advertisements and, and things. We appreciate her. Uh, and so many, so many, so many, so many, so many of you all do so much behind the scenes, behind the scenes. Uh, you know, if I start calling names, then somebody be offended. You didn't call my name. Everybody, you're, every, everybody, 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 everybody. Uh, there are some people who, who've been up here during the weeks, during the day, uh, doing some stuff. Some people don't even have a clue that they've been up here doing. Some people have been giving in some areas. You don't have a clue getting things taken care of. It takes a whole, they say it takes a village to raise a, a, a child. It takes a whole community, a whole group to make a church work. It takes a whole group to make it work. And without you all, we couldn't do what we do. And we thank you for your support and, and all that you do. Uh, so we appreciate you. Continue to pray. Uh, for uh, our senior bishop and first lady that the Lord will continue to strengthen and bless them. Uh, some of you were able to do uh, go by on yesterday. I know uh, she was surprised. Uh, oh, not on yesterday, on Friday. Uh, Sister Harper uh, celebrating another birthday on Thursday, right? It was the official day uh, of her birthday. And we, uh, we hate we couldn't miss it because we had other uh, previous engagements. But we definitely want you to know, hey, uh, happy birthday. We, we celebrate you. We did get an invitation. Uh, we thank God uh, for you seeing another year. Now, some, some sisters don't like their age told. But you, anybody know Sister Harper? Child, she will tell her age with a bounce. She just saw the Lord just blessed her. Can I do it her way? To see 85. 85, and she still got her bounce. Get your bounce on, sister. Get your bounce on. We just celebrate her. Uh, we, we were excited um, last week to be able to celebrate uh, Lady Hinton's uh, birthday uh, with the drive up.
enjoyed that and she definitely enjoyed it. But we celebrate all of you with your birthdays and your anniversaries uh, because we believe in just celebrating. We love partying, celebrating. So, speaking of celebration, some of y'all might say it's been a long time coming, forget you. Everybody's path is different. And I can say that because I am an adult learner. And it took me, and I will confess mine, it took me 16 years after graduation to get my associate's degree. So everybody's path is not, I, gra I graduate high school today and four years later I get out of college. It don't work like that. Sometimes you gotta learn to discover yourself and figure out who you are, where your niche is, where you wanna be. Some of y'all, 45, 60, y'all still ain't figured it out yet. But we are so elated. I, I don't even have enough words to say how elated we are to announce that our own Anitrion Felice is graduating on June the 25th from North Lake College. She has done an outstanding job. You know, when God finally allows you to find your place, you know, you struggle and you're trying and you're trying and you're trying. But see, I, I know what that's like. I struggled a long time trying to go where I thought I wanted to go. And when I finally found that right major, I just floated right on through. Anitrion has gotten into video production and lighting and sound and media, and she has and writing. flowed she and writing. Writes, she writes and directs. Her script writing makes you cry. Uh, and, and I promise you, God has really gifted her in that area, and she has done an outstanding job. She is graduating uh, and, and is looking for the next degree, looking for the next best thing, looking for the next great thing. Don't count her short, but don't always count her here. Because if God moves her, she's got to move. And that's her mama saying that with much reluctancy in her heart. But we are super proud, super proud of her for everything that she has done and what she's accomplished. And I promise you, tune in on the 25th of June, 7 o'clock p.m. online, we'll be in person. Online, you can see Sister Anitrion walk that stage, amen? Amen. And can I just say this, so you can go ahead and get your feelings out of the way. She's only, she was only given a very small, limited number because of COVID. They can't fill up the place. And mama and daddy come first. So I didn't get an invitation. I didn't, listen, you won't. And nobody, nobody will uh, because she don't have the tickets. Otherwise, we just have everybody there uh, with posters and signs and whatever. Uh, but uh, that's why you won't get an invitation. So don't let the devil fool you and tell you, you know, some, something stupid. It's just CDC says first come first serve, and you only get this amount of tickets. And her brother now, anybody, now you know that if it was only two, we'd be fighting with the brother. Y'all do know that, right? Because the brother, she would have probably given the ticket to first to to fight over who's going to be the second ticket. And and since on, in her phone digging, I'm parent two. I'd probably be. Looking at it online with some of y'all. Oh. <laughs> Thank God we have enough for the three of us to show up. So we are grateful for you and grateful for her. And uh, remember to keep uh, Lady E in prayer, who's still in class. She will be testing uh, later on during the summer. Continue to pray for Sister uh, Radcliffe, who's still in class, that the Lord will continue to, to Bless her. And some of you who the Lord been telling you to go back, take a class, take a class, take a class, take a class. He has greater things for you. You can do it. You can do it. And so we're grateful to God for that. Uh, don't forget the store is open uh, back up. So if you want to purchase something from the store, you can go through this hallway, socially distance, only two in the store at a time. Purchase some snacks as you go through and, get, and go out. We love and appreciate all of you. I think that's all the announcements here. Thank you. You know how we end it. Be blessed. Be joyous. Be safe. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Stay socially distanced. And may the Lord God bless you. 
real good.